Good evening. I thought that, what with me being a serious railway filmmaker and all that, I'd do a video about Thomas the Tank Engine. Specifically, the real locomotive, or locomotives, that he's based on. So, a little bit of background, just in case you somehow are not aware of this character. Thomas is one of the main characters of the Railway series of books by Reverend Wilbert Audrey and his son Christopher Audrey. He is not the main character of the books, although he is the central character of four out of the 42 books and plays a major supporting role in several more. He first appeared in the second book, Thomas the Tank Engine, published in 1946. He is, of course, the central character of the later TV adaptation. That initial book was illustrated by Reginald Payne, who based him on a London, Brighton and South Coast Railway E2 class tank engine. It's never been confirmed exactly why he did this. The E2s were a pretty obscure class of engine, designed by Lawson Billington. As engines go, they were meh. Not outstanding, not terrible. There were other classes of engine that could do the work they were designed for better, but on the other hand, they weren't a total flop. They were designed for freight work, tried on passenger trains, and lived out their final days as dock shunters at Southampton. One almost gets the impression that the LBSC and its successors couldn't really figure out what to do with them. They never seem to have found their niche. Were it not for Thomas, they'd probably be forgotten about by all but dedicated enthusiasts. Thomas is based on the second batch from 1915, which had extended side tanks to give them more range. And herein lies a tale. Reverend Audrey was a railway enthusiast who demanded realism from his illustrators. His first book, The Three Railway Engines, was illustrated by William Middleton. The illustrations are... just not very good. The engines look like toys, and compared to the work of later illustrators, they're bland and lacking in technical finesse. Audrey was not at all happy, and so Reginald Payne was brought in for the next book. His work really set the standard for future books. His illustrations are much more technically accomplished and realistic, but at the same time they're colourful and cartoonish enough to appeal to the target audience. Payne's day job, as it were, was working for the Admiralty. As such, he would have had to travel to the South Coast, and likely would have encountered E2s at Dover or Victoria, doing much the same sort of work that Thomas did in his first book. That being said, Audrey wasn't entirely happy with this, either. Yes, he was pleased to get an illustrator who actually knew what a train looked like, but he did not intend Thomas to be an E2. So what did he intend? Well, it seems likely that he didn't specifically intend Thomas to be anything. A later illustrator, Reginald Dalby, would rework the illustrations and would change some of the details on Thomas to make him look less like an E2. In those early books, the characters were not usually based on real locomotives, but rather on sorts of locomotives. Gordon, one of the major characters, is carried over from the previous book, and he looks very much like a typical express locomotive of the 1940s, but he doesn't really look like any specific type. So I think Thomas was meant to be much the same, just a typical six-wheeled tank engine. Audrey would change his mind on this. As the stories went on, he and his brother George started keeping notes and planning things out in more detail to keep continuity straight. Rather than being some vague railway somewhere in Britain, Thomas's railway would become the fictional North Western Railway on the fictional island of Sodor. By the sixth book, Henry the Green Engine, Wilbert had started basing the characters on specific types. He was happy to stick to Thomas being an E2. In 1987, he and his brother George published The Island of Sodor, its people, history and railways which is a hefty tome of lore that really is not aimed at the same target audience as the original stories. In this book, they retcon a lot of stuff, and to be honest, it often flatly contradicts what's in the stories. But anyway, he sticks to Thomas being an E2, but it's literally stated that no one knows how he got all the way to the island of Sodor. I don't know, nobody seems to have thought of just asking him. But there's more. 
The book, Thomas the Tank Engine, was the first appearance of Thomas in print, but actually his origins lie in a wooden toy built by Wilbert for his son Christopher. This engine bears a strong resemblance to a Great Northern Railway J23, better known by the later classification of J50 and J51. They were rather chunky freight engines designed by Nigel Gresley for coal trains in the West Riding. They were a big success, with more being built by the London and North Eastern Railway and allocated all over their network on all sorts of jobs. Their most distinctive physical traits must be their long, sloping tanks, designed to put a lot of weight on the engine's wheels without obscuring the driver's vision. Their unusual shape gave them the nickname of submarines. I think Thomas bears a slightly closer resemblance to a J-51, which had a longer bunker than the J-50. Audrey's original model and his sketches of it deviate somewhat from the supposed prototype. But he wasn't building a scale model, he was building a toy for a small child. He might well have been working from memory rather than an actual image. Or maybe he just liked the look of the J-51s and created something that looked like one but wasn't intended to actually be one. We may never know. Audrey had a model railway and Thomas was represented by three different models. First it was a freelance tank engine by Stuart Reedpath, then it was a London Midland and Scottish Railway Jinty made by Triang. Finally, he used a modified Hornby E2. However, I think Thomas, at least the Thomas in the original book, was written with yet another class of engine in mind. I've never seen this suggested as a prototype, although I think I did mention it in a previous video, long ago. I believe that when Audrey was writing those early stories, he was thinking of this. This is a Great Eastern Railway S56, later reclassified by the London and North Eastern Railway as J69s. There's a book by Christopher Audrey, entitled Sodor Reading Between the Lines, that talks a lot about the inspirations for the railway series' stories. Something that crops up a few times is the so-called jazz trains. These were high-frequency passenger services from Liverpool Street in London, along the branch lines to places like Chingford, Enfield and Palace Gates. It was a service where everything was planned for maximum efficiency. The reason they were called jazz trains was because the carriages carried brightly coloured stripes to enable passengers to instantly identify their train. Here's how it went. An engine would bring a train in and be uncoupled. A second engine would arrive and be coupled up at the other end. Its tanks would be filled while passengers boarded, and less than ten minutes after the train arrived, it would leave again. The inbound engine would be driven to the sidings, then attached to the next train. With trains at several platforms, this meant that a service could depart every two and a half minutes. The J69s originally hauled it, but later on it was taken over by larger tank engines, with J69s being demoted to lesser duties. Not dissimilar, in fact, to the ones we see Thomas performing in his first appearance. But despite the operation being extremely slick, mistakes happened and these provided plenty of inspiration for Audrey. In his first story, Thomas is cheeky to Gordon the big engine. When Thomas brings Gordon's coaches in, Gordon gets his revenge by starting before Thomas can be uncoupled, and the little engine gets unwillingly hauled at high speed behind the express. You don't mess with Gordon. You just don't. This happened with the jazz service when the incoming engine was accidentally left coupled. In the second story, Henry, who Audrey was incidentally planning to kill off at the time, is ill, and with no engine available, Thomas has to step in. Unfortunately, Thomas leaves before he's been coupled up, and ends up very embarrassed. This was another error that happened with the Jazz. But also the J69s were sometimes taken off shunting to haul the Jazz trains in later years when an N7 failed. Later stories, like the one where Thomas forgets his guard and the one where his brakes fail and he runs away, are also inspired by the Jazz. Basically, people complain about train services today, but it sounds like things used to be a lot more hair-raising. Although I suppose back then you could take your complaints to the engine directly, so it swings in roundabouts. Now, I have no evidence that Thomas was ever intended to be physically based on a J69, but they were small, six-wheeled tank engines that were painted blue under the Great Eastern Railway, and used for both shunting and branch line work. Coincidentally, one of the pilot engines at Liverpool Street would later be painted blue under British Railways, and would become something of a mascot for the station. 
So that's the complicated origin of Thomas. Part J50, part J69, mostly E2 and a smattering of nothing at all. Nevertheless, he is a really useful engine. I'm sorry, you just have to put that in one of these videos. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and subscribe for more. Depending how this video does, I may do more stuff on Thomas Law in railway history in future. Don't worry, this isn't going to turn into a Thomas channel. There are, however, a couple of topics that don't seem to get a lot of love in the fandom and that could merit a further look. As ever, I would like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the Annie to my Clarabelle. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.